Hey, my name is Lauren Green. I'm a crop consultant in the Mississippi Delta. And uh, what they asked me to give you a little talk on is what consultants in my area we kind of see throughout the growing season as far as corn diseases. And uh, so I'll run through a few slides and just kind of give you an idea of what we see and how we kind of combat it and go from there. Uh, some of the most common ones that we see in the Mississippi Delta, <clears throat> your, your southern and common rust, northern corn leaf blight and southern corn, uh, gray leaf spot, uh, usually have some hocus leaf spot early in the season and some various ear rots depending on the weather scenario throughout the year. And I'm just going to touch on two or three of these that we mainly see year in, year out. Uh, two that we probably see the most are the common and southern rust. <clears throat> Biggest misconception is common rust. It's really not going to be affecting yield too much even though it shows up. And there's some variance that you got to see between the two. Uh, Common rust is going to be more dark brick cinnamon color. It's usually found on both sides of the leaf. And it's, uh, both of them are wind blown, so uh, don't really have winter here, so we have to watch our wind currents a lot of times. Like to kill the temperatures, and they, common rust will usually show up first in cornfields. Uh, southern rust, kind of typically late in the growing season, it's more light orange in color. It can be found on the upper leaf surface, where common will be on both sides of the leaf surface. High heat and high humidity, you know, have a slight halo around its lesion. And once you see the difference in them out in the field, they're pretty easy to distinguish. Uh, that picture didn't really show up, but you can kind of see the southern more of a light orange compared to that dark <coughs> brown cinnamon color of the common rust. Uh, common rust over there on the <coughs> right hand side will be, uh, if you look at it under a hand lens or something, it'll kind of be more elongated than say southern rust where you can see the pustules a lot better. Scouting management of rust, common rust like I said is not really <clears throat> affecting yield that much so we don't really be much concerned for it but uh, southern rust can be depending on the severity of it. Uh, southern rust in late plant fields in the Mississippi Delta we usually mid-May through first of April we, you can usually get most of our corn planted. Uh, Typically, if we're planting late, mid, late April is when we really want to be concerned with the southern rust. We'll watch, like I said, depend on the wind currents, so it's going to be wind blowing in here, so we'll watch the wind currents if we start picking it up. Uh, the management of it, stage of corn. What, what stage is your corn in? Are you close to dent? Are you at tassel? So all this takes into consideration of whether or not we'll treat for southern rust depending on when our what stage our corn is. Uh, <clears throat> does it have a uh, potential on our yield, the severity of the rust, the hybrid selection, uh, and a fungicide? We'll use fungicides, like I said, if we're at tassel when it's starting to move in, we're in you know, high heat, high humidity, and it's uh, starting to show up, and you're scouting these fields weekly, and it, you can see it change from week to week, and you can see it change from day to day. To day. Uh, and so if it's starting to blow up fast, you know, depending on the stage of that corn, whether or not we need to spray a fungicide for it. If we're close to dent or we know it, we're cooling off and we're close to dent, we know we can outrun it, a lot of times we outrun it. Uh, northern corn leaf blight is probably the second most disease that we see in corn in the Mississippi Delta. Uh, see it more in continuous corn up behind corn behind corn. Uh, today's prices. We really don't see corn behind corn that much anymore. <laughs> uh, we do still have farmers that rotate it in and out for yield, for corn, uh, for soybeans or cotton. But uh, northern corn leaf blight will be about one to six inches long. It's, you know, the cigar-shaped brown lesion, be multiple lesions, and then when it's bad, you can walk in it and you'll just see the leaves just brown and they're just falling in. And it's probably too late by that time to do anything about it. Uh, moderate temperature, high humidity, uh, really intensify your scouting two weeks prior and after tasseling around that ear leaf. If it starts showing up on that ear leaf and you've got a septal variety around tassel, fungicide might be warranted. Uh, hybrid root, selecting the good hybrid really does a good job of doing northern corn leaf block. Uh, manage your residue rotation and like I said, we will do a fungicide if needed. In the Delta, we're a lot of fur irrigated, <clears throat> so we're going to do a lot of tillage. So we do a lot of good on managing a lot of our diseases because we're rotating in and out with crops and we're managing 
we're doing our tillage work, so we're turning it under a lot. Uh, especially with a lot of these newer farm implements with the disc rippers and the vertical hills, and we're really chopping it up and burying this, this residue a lot better and rotating in and out with them. Uh, gray leaf spot and southern corn leaf blight were probably your next ones. Uh, this is a gray leaf spot. Found more continuous corn on corn and reduced tillage. I think they see it more probably in the East Mississippi than we do in the Delta. Uh, we just don't see a lot of it. Like I said, we're not really in continuous corn more or reduced tillage in the Delta, but uh, we do see it from time to time. Uh, the gray leaf spot, the difference between that and the Southern is that the gray leaf spot that I can tell the most is it'll be run with the parallel veins and the Southern will go intervenal and go across veins. And you'll see gray leaf spot progress from the lower part of the plant to the upper part of the plant. Uh, same with the gray, it's just it's a hybrid selection, manage the residue and a fungicide is usually our last option that we want to use. So at the beginning of the year, if we can select good hybrids to manage a lot of these diseases that we see is where our first choice is. Uh, then manage the residue. Like I said, we're fair irrigated, so we do a lot of groundwork, so we do a good job of that. And then last, needed a fungicide. Uh, the southern corn leaf blight, like I said, <clears throat> similar to gray leaf spot, but it's more crossing veins is a good way to distinguish it. It has a lot of different lesions, so it kind of makes it a little harder to distinguish. Uh, the hybrid selection on this is probably your best control method. You get it before you, it gets you. Uh, crop rotation and tillage, and like I said, that last, you know, we try to be a last resort as a fungicide. We will use them though. Uh, last few things I have is uh, toward the end of the year, you'll see a few, we've run across some ear rots depending on weather throughout this year. We had a few uh, spots of diplodia this year on some corn behind corn, even though we had it tilled, we did have some spots where diplodia showed up, but it didn't seem to affect the yield too bad. Uh, and then cerium <coughs> and trichoderma can be occasionally ear rots, but we never seem to have a yield effect from it. Uh, we just never had had it that bad. Like I said, the early planting is another key to our success of avoiding most of our diseases in the Delta. Uh, there's some pictures that Tom Allen had taken, and you can kind of see it where it'll start at the base of that ear and work up its way up. And it'll uh, eventually get to that husk right there. And I think the next slide, and this was from this year. So you can walk down through the field and you'll see that at the base of the ear where it'll start. And you can take that and shuck that husk back and you'll see it where it'll start right and you'll see that growth starting from the base, hit it up, and then eventually it'll kill off that ear leaf and that husk will turn brown. Uh, last little slide there, trichodermia. I don't know if I've probably seen it in the last four or five years have found any in ours, but we do see it on occasion. Uh, it doesn't seem to be uh, affecting our yield because we just find some here and there and it's really just not an explosive disease on our end. And that's about all I have as far as diseases in the Delta that we commonly see and kind of the approach that we take. So uh, our main approach is really a hybrid selection. I think the breeders do a really good job of combating these diseases and then uh, tillage and just intensify your scouting it when it's needed and watch the currents on these rust and if needed, use a fungicide at the proper time. And the fungicide is a great tool, but there's a lot of factors go in it. You really don't have a threshold for it, but look at the stage of the crop, what it's going to cost you. Are you going to get a return on it? Uh, how bad is it? How close are you to a dent? Uh, so it's many factors to go into it. Where do you get your information about like your hybrid selection and what's resistant to what and all that? Do you have some place you go? Or well, you get, you <clears throat> got Dr. Larson back there, and he's our corn specialist, and they, him and Tom do a good job of really going through the varieties and doing different trials, and uh, they put out good uh, information for us. <laughs> okay, right. All right. Uh, but it's more probably just, you know, based on our state, I would say, you know, I'm assuming, you know, but the disease package, I'm sure, would go to other states, wouldn't you say? Yeah. I'm just across in Louisiana. And I uh, check a little corn in Way further south. Way further. Uh, you know, and it, it, it goes back to some of the farmers. We would we, we get varieties depending on are they going to let it stay in the field? 
you know, when it goes down to stalk strength and, you know, you're going to let it stay in the field or you're going to dry it down, right. is it late planted, early planted? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a lot of field by field basis that go into a lot of these right. decisions on whether or not to apply the fungicide or let the disease ride and try to outrun it. It, you, well, and that's when that's when you really got to intensify that scouting at yeah, times too. Right, <laughs> you try to get by there and, yeah. and scout it. <clears throat> but the, yeah, but the biggest thing is the rust, and they'll blow up on you pretty quick. And uh, and you know, the earlier you can get it planted, the better off you are. Uh, and how close you can get to outrunning it. I mean, if you're at tassel and this is starting to blow up, you might need to apply a fungicide. You know. Uh, even at R3, depending on the intensity of it, you know. I let some ride two years ago. It was ugly, but it didn't affect the yield. Oh, now, yeah, I mean, you'll, you'll look back and it'd just be an orange dust bowl behind the combine thinking you did something wrong. I was scared to death when you got like 220 or something. Well, you should have cut 230, I don't know. Yeah, but that's all I have. Any more? I, you know, on the fungicides, I'm not particular. Uh, if the farmer's on a program, whether they're on the Syngenta program or they're on the, a PHI or something where it's the approach premier or the Quiltic cell, we'll go, depend on disease and whether or not the farmer's on a program, we'll decide going from there, really. Uh, to be honest with you, we probably have not done a fungicide on corn in the last couple of years because we're you know, planting early, doing a good job of selection of hybrids, we're managing the residue. And the corn acres in Mississippi have really gone down due to price. So we're, I, I don't know if we've put one out in two years. I mean, they've still done well and done a good job controlling diseases by other ways. That it? All right.